name is Roger Hines. Uh, I work for the CNRS in Poole, in an institute called the IPREM, uh, with the University of Poole. My topic of research is to try and make polymers for fullerene for organic photovoltaics and uh, perhaps also for other applications. Uh, they've attracted a lot of attention from scientists because uh, they, they need so many different things to be done. It's not just organic chemistry, theoretical chemistry, physical chemistry, uh, analyzing surfaces, um, getting into the detail of electronic transfer, all those things, but also because they, they have a, a real visible impact on, on society. I mean, there's nothing better for a scientist to make something or, or understand or characterize something and then see it be used by the public. And, and we're getting the feeling just now that um, hybrid and organic photovoltaics are actually going to be really useful for the public. Um, you might know about the COP20 agreement. Everyone knows about the COP21. We're all going to aim for less than 2 degrees C warming. Um, but the COP20, to my mind, is more interesting because it's, it's more about giving people, to, um, giving energy and control over energy to people, to individuals, uh, to women, to ethnic minorities, um, and letting people be responsible for their energy uses and, and where their energy comes from. And for society, uh, organic electronics and organic photovoltaics are useful because they're things that people can actually install on, we hope, one day on their own homes uh, that they can use um, for their own electricity. So the, there's also a dream behind it. And, and I think actually now that dream's becoming, starting to become a reality. So there's the scientists who are interested in it, but there's also a real societal impact. And, and I think that's why the heat is on now. The drawback is efficiency. Uh, we're still at 5-6% for organic photovoltaics and if you want to put um, a silicon solar cell up on your roof, that's great. It's 20% efficiency and the government will pay you money or the, the local electricity board will pay you money uh, to buy your electricity from you. And each day goes by, you make electricity and you can sell it. With OPV, the efficiency isn't there yet. Um, it probably will be in the coming years. And it's, it really is a thing to overcome. But I, I don't think that it's a problem. I think that OPV has uh, real benefits that silicon doesn't have. OPV is lightweight. You can um, have OPV with different colors. You can make, you can print different shapes, leaves, different forms, and all those things mean that, that it has different possibilities. You can use it in buildings in, in ways that you can't with silicon. Uh, just to take an example, on a very practical basis, if you try to install a silicon solar cell in a village in France, within 500 meters of a church, they would probably, the authorities would probably say no, because the silicon looks awful to their mind. I mean, I, I like silicon, but they think it looks awful. But if you have OPV, you can print it so it might look gray, it hides in with the rest of the building, and you can put it up on your building, and they will accept that because it works. So I don't, I don't think OPV has you know, great problems. I think it's, it's complementary to, to silis, sil, sorry, silicon technologies. You just have to deal with it in a different way. So you can use it and adapt to different situations.